Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings Tumblers here, and today I've got more of an inspiration cup. So it's not gonna be a technique that you haven't seen before. There are some beautiful vinyl wraps, there's some beautiful peekaboos, beautiful power washes, and so I'm more just doing it for inspiration and just walking through my process of how I decide what the whole design of the cup's gonna be. And sometimes that changes right in the middle, as this one did. So I'm just gonna kinda walk you through my steps of how I do things, and hopefully you guys, it'll help to some extent. And please ask any questions that I'm not clear on. Um, I really had fun with this one. I had this Aztec Western bottle, and I really loved it, and so I knew I wanted to do something special. And then I found these chrome spray paints that I totally fell in love with. So I'm gonna use one of those today. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. I will list all the products that I use in the description box below. So make sure you check out those links as well as some discount codes. Join my Facebook group, Dixie Darlings Tumblers, and share your creations with me. I love to see what you guys come up with. So thank y'all so much for watching and I hope y'all enjoy it. So as I said, this will be more of a just a basic from start to finish process. So I've got a 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia and I've taken my 60 grit sanding block and I've sanded it. I just lightly sanded it. I usually take a paper towel or a coffee filter, put a little rubbing alcohol on it and then wipe it down after that. Sometimes I'll also wash it with Dawn uh, dish soap. So it's kind of an option. And then my sh vinyl sheets that I get from the Vinyl Cottage come in a 12 by 12 and it has a little white border around it. So I usually take just my cutter and cut off the little white border and then I'm just going to lay the vinyl next to the cup and kind of give myself a little quarter inch overhang at the top and usually about a half to a three quarter inch overhang on the bottom. Just so I have enough to pull it on the bottom and then really at the top you just want enough where you can pull it tight. And then once I get the appropriate amount of vinyl, I do just trim off the edge right here. So I have just a little strip that I can lay on the cup that I can kind of play with to make sure it's lined up correctly before I actually take the whole backing off to lay my vinyl on the cup. So you can see here, I'm just laying it on there and then I usually wrap it around until I get it straight where that top seam or the, I mean the top um, of the vinyl up there is actually lined up when I lay it around the cup. And then once I make sure that that top line up there, is, the edge of the vinyl is laying straight around the cup, I'm gonna go ahead and take that little strip and just press it down firmly against the cup. And then I'll turn the cup over and just barely start to peel the rest of the backing off. And then I'll just let the pressure of, you can kinda see I'm just gonna barely pull it off here. And then as I rotate the cup around, I'm just gonna let my pressure of applying the vinyl on the cup Peel the backing off as I work my way around. And then this is just how I found that works the smoothest for me, how the vinyl lays the smooth, is holding the cup where the vinyl coming off is facing me, and then literally I just run my finger up and down the cup like this. It seems to apply the most even pressure when I'm holding the cup like this. And you can see I've got my left thumb at the top where I'm just trying to make sure that on the, on the top and bottom of the cup that it's laying flat. And then I am gonna apply my strip of tape. This is just how it works for me. I like to lay this strip of painter's tape down. So when I get back around to this side, I have this seam where when I press the vinyl down to trim it off, I have a little bit of overlap. So that's just how I like to do it because I cannot cut a straight line to save my life. So it just helps me the best when I have a little bit of a buffer there that if the line's not perfectly straight, I have a little overlap where you're not gonna see the cup through it. And then I'm just continuing to work my way around the cup until I get back around to where my tape is. And then I'm gonna trim off that excess. But you can kind of see I'm holding the top with my left thumb just to kind of apply a consistent pressure there where that vinyl is gonna lay flat and it's not gonna have any air bubbles at the top or the bottom. And then I'm just gonna trim off this excess first before I actually go in and trim right next to the tape line. And then I'm just gonna press down right there where that tape line is so I have a pretty good kind of seam right there where I can trim against. Then I'm just pulling the top pretty tight against the cup as well. So you can see I'm just gonna apply a little pressure here and run my craft knife where it just butts up to the edge of that tape. And 
and then usually I just flip the cup over I just tend to try to get a glare on the cup from the light where I can see that seam really well and then I'm gonna go right in and just peel this tape away I'm just careful when I'm picking it off the bottom or the top that I don't that the vinyl doesn't pull up with it usually I don't have an issue with that um, but I just try to be careful to make sure the vinyl stays on the cup and just I'm peeling off the tape. And then because I've already pulled the top pretty tight up against the cup to make sure there's no bubbles and it is laying flat against the top rim, I'm just going to go in and trim off that excess there as well. And then I did have somebody ask me after last week's tutorial about when I lay my vinyl, if there's air bubbles, what do I do? So I wanted to make sure that I went over this part as well, because sometimes I just take for granted or don't even think about it, guys, so I apologize. Um, but I just take my craft knife, and you can just barely, especially when you're using a sharp craft knife, just barely touch the vinyl and rub it with your finger, and that vinyl, those air bubbles will just come right out of the vinyl. And then I'm going to move to the bottom of the cup. And I'm just going to take the edge that's laying on the bottom of my overlap here, and I'm just gonna pull it as tight as I can across the bottom of the cup. And I'm just gonna continue to work my way around. I'm mainly using my left thumb to press down to make sure there's no creases that are where the, cup, where the vinyl is coming around from the side to the bottom of the cup. So that's mainly where you run into issues uh, where it'll be rough and you can't get it smoothed out after you apply epoxy on that little edge that comes around from the side to the bottom of the cut. And this vinyl is from the Vinyl Cottage. I found these beautiful Western Aztec patterns that I knew I wanted to use, and I will link them in the description box below for y'all. And funny that y'all can see the little sparkle on my hands here. I had a little bag of uh, counterculture sterling snow uh, kind of explode in my house. So I apologize for all the sparkle you're going to see on this video. But I just take my craft knife and these 24 plumps have this little seam around the bottom that make it really easy for you to trim off vinyl. I love using these and wrapping them in vinyl because it makes it so easy with that little seam that's there. And then I usually just take either um, a credit card or some type of you know flat object or either my fingernail and just press that vinyl down where it almost lays down in that seam of the cup. So right after I've got my vinyl on, I am just gonna go into a layer of Countercultures Fast Set. I've mixed up more than I need, but I use about 20 milliliters on a cup this size. So I'm just gonna go in and apply that and use my torch to heat any bubbles. And I'm very careful on this step, just because if you get too much heat on the vinyl where the seams are, it does tend to lift up. So I'm trying to be very careful on that part. And then after I let that coat dry for about three hours, I am gonna go in and go ahead and apply my cowhide print here. So I kinda had an idea that I was gonna frost this with a frosted spray paint. So I actually tried that on the cup, didn't like it. So that's kind of mid design, I had to kind of start over here. So I've decided that I'm gonna go in and do a power wash with a, this gold chrome spray paint that I found. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of the cowhide at a time. So just cause I didn't wanna distort the cowhide too much, I am gonna just apply it in, I printed it off in a sheet, but I'm gonna apply it in sections. Even though it would've fit around the cup, I, did, I wanted to make sure where it's gonna overlap, that it looks pretty seamless and it doesn't appear, you know, where it, it doesn't just look like it flows from one side to the other. So I prefer to do it by hand at that point. So I'm just laying my transfer tape down. I'm just gonna apply it here and then pull my backing off before I get it on the cup. And I do print this cowhide pattern off in 11.17 by 7.97. It's just kind of how the size that I want after I measured the cup. It was about eight inches by 
nine and a half I think is what the cup is on this 24 ounce but I went ahead and just printed off a little bit bigger so I'd have a little bit room to work with my overlap and not distort the pattern too much I will link the pattern I, this is the one I bought on Etsy in the description box below as well as the sizing I used to apply it to the cup And then because I've laid my transfer tape down pretty good and square on the pattern, I'm able to just line that up with the edge of the cup, the grids, and then just go ahead and place it around the cup here. And then I'm just gonna continue to work my way around here, just applying a little pieces at a time. So then I do have room to go in and create my own, um, you know, kind of seamless from one edge to the other where they don't look too close or too far away. I just prefer, I prefer to do that by hand. And then because I am basically still placing it in the order that it came, you can see it's pretty easy to just line up where the pattern was and it just fits right in. It's mainly just that main overlap where they would seam together that I like to place by hand. So here you can see I start going in and placing them by hand just to make sure that the pattern's pretty seamless from one side to the other. And then right after I get my vinyl spots on there, I'm gonna go out with my Dawn Power Wash here. And I'm gonna do a couple of layers of this. I want pretty much the open areas to be covered with the gold paint. So I want a little bit of the power wash effect, but I mainly want the cowhide to show here. And then after I've got pretty minimal coverage here, I am gonna go in with this Montana gold chrome spray paint and just do a pretty light coat here. I do want coverage on it, but I know I'm gonna go in with several layers. So I coat it, try to coat it thoroughly, but I know I'm gonna do a second layer here with the power wash. And then after I get it spray painted, I'm just gonna rinse it off and then I'm gonna go back through the process again. And then you can see here, it's just got a thin layer and I definitely want more gold paint on here. So I'm just gonna continue to build up the coverage and do the power wash several times here until I get the coverage that I want over the vinyl. So after I rinsed this final coat off, I did decide to go back in with another coat here just to give myself a little bit heavier coverage. And I've let that dry for about an hour just because this chrome paint does seem to be a little, take a little bit longer to dry. And then I'm gonna go in and just peel off my vinyl spots here. And y'all know I won't even tell y'all a lie, this is a little bit of a process, so I kinda had to work at it. This chrome paint seems to provide a little bit thicker coat, especially because I've done a few layers of it. So it did take me a little while to get the vinyl picked off, but to me, it was worth it. And then after I've got all my vinyl off the cup, I went straight into a layer of epoxy. A lot of times if I feel like there's a dampness to the cup, I will add a layer of Mod Podge after my power wash. And as a matter of fact, I usually do do a layer of Mod Podge or Quick Coat. But for some reason, I just didn't feel on this cup it was necessary. The paint was really, it was a real dry paint. And I didn't feel like there was any dampness in the cup or it was gonna repel the epoxy. So I just go in with another layer of Counterculture's Fast Set about 25 milliliters and I'm gonna add a little bit of peachy olive glitters bright to this. I just wanted a little bit of sparkle over the gold but not too much as to cover up the gold metallic. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this coat to the cup and then I'm gonna use my torch to pop any bubbles. I do use the Burns-O-Matic TS4000 
Um, again, I'm just very careful with it. A lot of people have issues, I think, with a bigger torch. I just try to keep the heat pretty far away from the cup and just do really quick kind of swiping motions across the cup. And then after I've let this coat dry for about three hours, I am gonna go in and to apply my decals. Now this pour myself a cup of ambition, I did it on this textured gold that I love. It came from the Vinyl Cottage. I'll link it down below, as well as the sizing for everything. This actually decal, I just created it myself in the Fonto app, and it was a, um, font that I imported in there and saved. I will have that in the Dixie Darling Tumblr's Facebook group. I'm going to upload it right now so I don't forget so you guys can have it in the file section. And then I'm going to use a two-tone layered leopard spot also that's the Bear Trends Digi Designs. I'll link it down below as well as the sizing for that. Um, the spots I end up doing in a 5.78 by 5.73 square and then the um, pour myself a cup of ambition 2.54 by 2.96 but I will list these all these down in the description box below for y'all and then I end up getting a file off of Etsy that was the Dolly Parton signature is just Dolly and it ends up being 2.75 by 0 0.87 I will put that sizing down below I know that goes really fast and I will link the Etsy store that I purchased it from as well so here, I just lay it, like to lay it down on the cup, especially when you've got something that's a block and it's gonna be centered um, with the backing still on it, just to make sure that my spacing is correct and it is gonna be straight on the cup before I go into just pulling the backing off and then applying it. I usually start on one side when it's just a block like this of lettering and then just work my way around. And then I like to go back after I have it on and just measure and make sure just to double check myself once I actually get the decal on the cup. And this is usually a step that sometimes I just forget to show you guys and I apologize. I do, at this point, I am gonna take my craft knife and I'm just gonna run it around the top edge. I have not sanded the top at this point just because I wanted to get a couple of coats over the vinyl before I sand. And I don't actually show you the sanding, but I am gonna, I do go in here and with my craft knife and just pull off any excess epoxy that's gotten around and then start creating that rim around the top where it's going to adhere so i do that with my craft knife usually first and you can i know it's hard to see here but i usually do it at an angle and i'm angling it um, down towards the bottom of the cup so it, it's going to pull off anything that's going to be sticking up right there on that edge and then i am going to go in with my 120 sanding block after i get the decals done before i go into my next layer of epoxy i use a 120 grit sanding block that i will link down below i buy them in a set and they're just coming like 60 80 120 and 220 and usually for sanding the top rim i'm going to go with a 120 just because i don't want too much of the vinyl to come off it sometimes will create a white rim when you're doing that and so I don't want that to happen here on this cup um, so I do do that before I go into my next layer of epoxy and then here you can see I like to as always apply my leopard spots by hand so I'm just going to trim off little pieces of them little sections at a time and then apply them from there just so they don't all stick to the cup I like to just have little pieces of them and then I can do them by hand so you definitely can just take the sheet and wrap it around the cup or however you want to do a whole section at a time I just prefer to lay them by hand um, because I know that I'm going to not be happy with the way if I just put them on there as the sheet. Just because, especially here, I'm trying to wrap them around. I want to put the dolly on the back, which you could do. I kind of did this as a way of, it wouldn't have to necessarily be the dolly, but maybe you could put your own name at the, at the bottom on the back. I just thought it would be a little bit different way than doing the vertical name like I usually do. Or, you know, be a fun little way where I'm actually going to wrap the leopard spots from the front around to the back and kind of come across the name. So it was just more of like an inspiration thing here to do it this way a little bit different design than I've done it before so and then here I'm using again this textured gold vinyl it is from the vinyl cottage and then also a turquoise glitter so I will link both of these in the description box this was a lighter turquoise and it seems like I have a hard time finding the finding one this color and this is the one that I go to in this shade I really love this it has just a little bit of sparkle to it and I thought it was the perfect kind of accent to bring out the light turquoise that's already in the cup 
And then here, I'm kind of just going as you would say the infamous <laughs> Jessica Flynn's Gypsy Leopard, how the leopard spots swirl around the cup. I'm kind of doing that, but I'm doing it off of the main decal. So it would be a swirl kind of around. It's what I, my, the idea in my mind was if I swirl it from the top and swirl it to the bottom. And then on the bottom, I do end up like going all the way around. And here you see where I can add, I've added the dolly, the signature in the bottom. And I'm just gonna take my leopard spots and kind of wrap around where I put the signature. So I just kind of thought it would be a fun, different way to add a name on a cup where it's on there, but maybe everybody doesn't want their name, you know, as the dominant item on the cup. I know some people, when I've been making custom cups, some people do and some people don't. So I thought this might be a fun little way to add it in there where it's not so obvious, but you still have your name on there and it's personalized. And then a little fun fact for y'all, if you've been following me on social media, you can see that I've got a new table background here and it actually is the same table I've always used. And funny little story, for probably months to come, you guys are gonna see Sterling Snow from Counter Cultures, uh, <laughs> Glitter Line. Uh, I was trying to add a little bit into the epoxy and it kind of exploded and it's all over my house, it's all over the table. And so it, the table ends up being a lot more sparkly than what I anticipated. <laughs> And so now after I've got my leopard spots placed like I want, I'm gonna go straight into my next layer of epoxy. And this layer I'm gonna do Counter Cultures Regular Artist Resin, and I'm gonna do about 25 milliliters. I do feel like it gives me a thicker coverage, and so especially over this vinyl, I'm gonna want like a little bit thicker than maybe I get with um, the facet, which you do definitely get a great coat. I just prefer to go in with my final layers with the Artist Resin. and Typically, I would coat this with a layer of quick coat just because I'm moving kind of from one coat into the next. It's still a little bit tacky where I'm pretty sure that vinyl is not going to lift off. But say this cup's been sitting for more than about six hours, I would go in with a layer of quick coat over any kind of holographic or chrome, basically any kind of vinyl. So I'm going to apply this uh, coat. I'm going to use my torch to pop any bubbles. I'm going to be very careful because especially if I don't have a layer of quick coat on here, if you get too close to this textured gold vinyl, it will tend to peel off and you're going to kind of distort it. It's going to leave like a, a, like a place where it's not shiny anymore. So I try to be very careful when I'm using my torch on this kind of vinyl. Um, that's usually why I do a layer of quick coat anyway to keep it from peeling from the cut, but also to protect it when I'm going in with my torch. So I do do this coat. I'm going to let it dry for about six hours and I'm going to go into a second layer of artist resin and the same process and then I'm going to let that dry and we've got our final design. So here's my final design. I hope that you guys like it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope it provides a little inspiration, just going through several different steps here in the process. Y'all know I'm a sucker for anything rustic, country, and then you throw some two-tone layered leopard spots on it and I am game for it. So I appreciate you guys watching. Please go like, share, subscribe, all that fun, crazy stuff. Make sure you join my Dixie Darlings Tumblr's Facebook group and share your creations with us. And thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all again soon.